what's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and learn about 101 random facts about the UK. I'm excited for this video because there's a lot of stuff I don't know or understand about the UK, and there's a lot of stuff about the UK that I don't know that I don't know. So it's kind of nice to, to have a video like this where I can just sit back and be bombarded with random UK information and see what happens, see what I learn. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what to expect out of this video or what I'm gonna learn, but I'm gonna learn something and it's gonna be good. So let's take a look. The United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland is a sovereign country consisting of England, Wales, Scotland, and guess who? Northern Ireland. <laughs> you know, it's funny to me now. It's funny to me because this is something I understand now, uh, but old me did not understand at all. Most Americans, most Americans don't know what the UK is, like what countries comprise the UK. Most Americans, including myself, for the longest time, like, I called the UK the same thing as Britain, the same thing as England. I would use all three of those terms interchangeably, which is so crazy to me now, having, having learned that they are very three very distinct, different things. Uh, and, and most Americans don't even know about Northern Ireland. Is that insane or what? Um, I can... <laughs> Northern Ireland, the fact that, like, Ireland is not just one singular place, you know? Uh, so, I actually think this is the perfect number one fact, actually. Even though I already knew this one, this is the perfect number one fact. Number two. The Union Jack is a Marvel character, but also oh. a flag. Rather cleverly, right. it's the flags of England, Scotland, and Ireland's St. Patrick's Saltire flag all merged together. Again. Again, again, something that I never knew that the, I mean, in America, we just call this the UK flag or the British flag. It has a name. It's the Union Jack. And the, the shock I experienced learning this, that the flag is made up of these three flags put together. That's brilliant. It's like a secret code to us Americans. Again. Something that seems so obvious, but for, for us Americans, like, we live our whole lives and don't even know this until we randomly learn it on the internet. <laughs> Sorry, Wales, there was no room for a dragon on there. Yeah, and then randomly Wales isn't on there with the dragon? That's right. Number three. St. George's Cross is widely known as the flag for England. Okay. It is a red cross atop a white flag and came into use in the late 18th century. I, I, I did not know that it had a name, St. George's Cross. I, I did not know that. And most Americans, I struggle with this. Uh, like most of us, we don't even know that there's, a, that there's an English flag. I, I know that's kind of like probably offensive, but it's just the truth. Most Americans just visualize the Union Jack, what we call the British flag. And most of us, like, don't know that there's even individual flags for England, Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales, you know, all that. Uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Sorry, I'm not sure why I'm doing that dusty old librarian voice, but I can't seem to help it. Number four. St Andrew's Cross is the flag of Scotland. Hmm. Come on, stop doing that voice. According to legend, <laughs> it's a cross because of a battle between the Scots and the Angles. Nope, not those kind of Angles, although <laughs> that is a cute one. <laughs> Oh, boy. During this oh battle, boy. the clouds in the sky apparently formed into an X, thus marking the flag. No what? Is that true? That's, that is the most random story I've ever heard. I'm sure there's going to be many more of those in this video, though. It was a cloud formation. You know what? You got to make your flag based off something. What the heck? Why not? Number five. This is Wales's flag, which is a lot, <laughs> lot better than the others, mainly due to the fact it has a dragon on it. But right. why? Well, yeah. well, well, my sugar plum fairy. It was the symbol of the King of Gwynedd, named King Cadwallader. Number okay. six. Okay, okay. Northern Ireland doesn't have its own flag. Sorry, Northern Ireland. Number six. What? Wait, what? 
Wait, what? Northern Ireland doesn't have a flag. How can Northern Ireland not have a flag? Isn't it its own, like, sovereign nation? Right? You know, whatever the technical term is. Is it just an Irish flag? Is that... That's a little strange to me. I did assume that Northern Ireland had a flag. That's very interesting. I wonder why that is. Northern Ireland doesn't have its own flag. Sorry, Northern Ireland. Really? Number seven. England and Wales were united in 1536 like ex-lovers. Then Scotland joined in in 1707 like a swingers party that created Great Britain. <laughs> wow. Renamed the United Kingdom in 1801 when Ireland was added too. Right, okay. Number eight. As of 2013, the population of the UK is 64.1 million. Okay. England has 53 of those millions, Scotland has 5.3 million, Wales 3 million, and Northern Ireland 1.8 million. You know, I did not realize England had such a ridiculous majority of the population. I actually have never thought of it like that. Scotland has 5. Point it, England has like 50 million? 54.1 million. England has 53 of those millions. 53 million. 53 million. The vast, vast, vast majority of people in the UK are English. I assumed, I guess I assumed England was the biggest, but not, not that much bigger. I just never thought about it. I never had any context. Again, this is probably so obvious to people living in the UK. But it's like, it's kind of like maybe how people in other countries outside the United States probably don't really know how populated certain states are in the United States. I don't know. That's how, that's my comparison to make me feel better. <laughs> Scotland has 5.3 million, Wales 3 million, and Northern Ireland 1.8 wow. million. Wow. Number nine. The UK is close to 95,000 square miles. Okay. Number 10. Okay. The UK's longest coastline is around 5,000 miles. The wow. exact distance the Proclaimers will walk for you. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Number wow. 11. Our <laughs> highest mountain is Ben Nevis, because we like naming things Ben in the UK. Ben, ben Nevis? Again. This is something I would think I've heard of. This really is the perfect video of random information. Like, stuff I feel like I should know but never came across somewhere along the line, like the population of England compared to the other parts of the UK, or the tallest mountain in the UK, Be Ben Nevis. The highest mountain is Ben Nevis because we like naming things Ben in the UK. Okay. Benny Boy can be found in Scotland at just over 1,340 meters high. Oh, Number cool. 12. <laughs> we have, and this is an actual measurement, a f ton of history in the UK, <laughs> dating all the way back to 6,500 BC. The, that is accurate. The UK has a lot of history. Holy cow. All over the UK, you'll find monuments marking its history, from Stonehenge to Buckingham Palace. Right, and, and that's, that's one of the coolest parts about the UK, compared to the United States. Like, we don't have so many of these super old, we have some monuments, not a ton of the old, like, super old monuments. We don't have castles or palaces, really. The UK just has a bunch, whole bunch of cool historical stuff. Uh, and that's, that's really something very unique from an American's point of view. Makes it really, really, really cool, I think, when Americans visit. And it, is it almost feel normal living in the UK? Having all these, like, palaces and castles and cool stuff. It's so different. Because it's really not something you see here. <laughs> Number 13. Perhaps because of this, and because its residents are kooky folk like me, in 2010, 29.6 million people visited Britain, spending an wow. average of £563 per person and stayed seven days on average. Wow. Number four. I'm not... I, I would imagine Britain... Britain is one of the most visited places. Certainly for Americans, I would think. I guess a lot of people are going to, like, islands and, and super, like, tropical places to vacation. But I think a lot of Americans talk about Britain, or maybe specifically London, uh, London, England, as, like, a place they really want to go at some point in their life. Uh, for, us Amer for Americans that even travel outside the United States, which 
A lot of Americans never even do that, honestly. 14. We also can't move for bloody castles. There's actually six to <laughs> 700 all across the country, and no, alas, I don't live in one. Wow. Number 15. We also have plenty of places of enlightenment and worship. Hubs. <laughs> the, the pubs, that's right. I have learned about the pubs. Pubs are just this magical, mythical British thing to me at this point. There's nothing like a pub here in the United States, I have learned. I've learned the difference between a, a bar here in the United States and how it's just, it is not like a pub. A pub is <laughs> a place of worship, as he <laughs> they joke here. By the end of 2015, there were around 52,750 of them. I bet wow. at least 50,000 of them were named the Red Lion or something. <laughs> right, right, because every, it's, doesn't every, like, area kind of have its local pub? And oh my god, there's over 50,000 of them. I'm not totally shocked, I guess. Because, like, like I think, everywhere, everywhere seems to have, like, oh, the local pub, right? Number 16. Oh, according to the Daily Mail, which is something you shouldn't read, by the way, there are 518 pubs in the UK with the name Red Lion. The Red Lion. Well, you can keep your Red Lion, mate, because I know which pub I'll go to. to wait. That, is, that is the most pub-sounding name ever. The Red Lion. The, like, the, the, silver, the silver bucket, or like the Red Lion, or the Purple Tiger. That's like how you name something. A color, and then a random object. Wait for things to blow over. Go to the Winchester, have a nice cold pint. Winchester. For all this to blow over. Winchester for life. Winchester. Number 17. There are stranger pub names out there, including the Bunch of Carrots in Hereford, the Quiet Woman <laughs> in Buxton, and my father's moustache in Lincolnshire. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like that a lot. I think that's something pubs definitely should do, is have like a silly fun name, because that's kind of like the vibe I get about like going to a pub. It's about relaxing, not taking your time too seriously. So I, I, I bet having a funny name literally increases your sales or something like if, you, if they did a study on it. Number 18. English is the official language spoken throughout the UK, clues in the name. But there are other official languages too, such as Welsh, Scots, ordering a kebab while drunk, and Gaelic. Scots? Is Scots a language? Like, not, not Scottish English. There's a language, Scots? I understand the Welsh. I know Welsh is a language. But, but they said Scots. Languages too, such as Welsh, Scots, ordering a kebab while drunk, and Gaelic. Gaelic? I've no idea what Gaelic is or where that's from. And I'm still, like, a bit taken back by the Scots. There's a Scottish language? Scots? Really? All right, who's laughing at Gaelic? Own up. Number 19. Contrary to what some believe, oh. we're not exactly led by the Queen anymore. The United right. Kingdom is a parliamentary democracy, which means the government is elected by the people. Right, right, right. Number right, this does confuse a lot of Americans. A lot of Americans don't understand the role of royalty in the UK. From what I understand, royalty is... These days, just symbolic. Tradition, basically, uh, from what I understand. A lot of Americans are confused about this. <laughs> the 20. There's a general election once every five years to find out who our next PM is going okay. to be. Like five a years. very long, tedious, and very boring talent show. <laughs> the Prime Minister, or the PM as I just said just then, leads the government with the support of the cabinet. Not a literal cabinet. Right. As well as ministers and members of parliament. The, I, I understand some stuff about British government, like that there is a prime minister and a house of commons and a house of lords, and there's MPs. I'm, I'm proud that I even understand that much. I think that's above average for most Americans. <laughs> Number 21. The UK has had 76 prime ministers, including the great Winston Churchill and right. um, others. <laughs> Number 22. I, I, I don't even know who that is. And Churchill and, um, others. This is like showing a bad U.S. president or unpopular one. But I don't know who this prime minister is. <laughs> 
Number 22. Uh. The first female Prime Minister was Margaret Thatcher, who right. seemingly had a hoot. So much so, she ran from 1979 to 1990 and is the longest serving Prime Minister for over 150 years. What? I did not know that. I don't know a lot about Margaret Thatcher. I know the name. I'm... She's famous enough that I know the name. Like, during our little American history classes, we were at least taught the name Margaret Thatcher. And probably a bit more, but I don't remember. I certainly don't remember that she's the longest serving prime minister. I think that's actually, like, very much worth worth knowing. So, again, another good random fact. <laughs> Number 23. The United Kingdom joined the European Union in 1979, but, um, not anymore. <laughs> well, <laughs> not yet, anyway, since we're apparently Brexiting the F out of there due to a referendum in June 2016. This is, this video was made before Brexit? So, right, the UK isn't part of the European Union. That happened at this point, right? If I, <laughs> I think I'm getting this right. Because reasons, and a bus mainly. Number 24. In fact, Collins Dictionary made Brexit, which sounds like a breakfast cereal specifically <laughs> designed for people with diarrhea, but is actually an admittedly terrible fusion of the words Britain and Exit, their right. word of the year in 2016. Oh. Number 25. I feel like, fast forward now, to the 2024, first day, or second day of 2024. Yes, second day of, I know, I, I keep track of time. Second day of 2024 here. Um, I think, like, in the last year, 2023, so long ago now, hard to remember, so long ago, um, aren't people in the UK starting to, like, say, oh, Brexit, like, that should be reversed? Or, I, I don't know how popular that opinion is. I know that's a debate that's happening, I think. Her Majesty the Queen of England II is the head of state in the United Kingdom. As a constitutional monarchy, Her Majesty does not rule the country as right, such. But right. the royal family fulfills important ceremonial and formal roles, like celebrating lots of birthdays <laughs> and showing off their children and corgis. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Again, a lot of Americans are confused about uh, what the role of the Queen was, now King Charles. Um, and a lot of Americans kind of question, does British royalty have any actual power? And Americans are like, oh, that's so old-fashioned. Like, they shouldn't be doing any decision-making. And the, the truth is, they really don't. They're just sort of a ceremonial representative position with corgis. Yes. Love you, though, your match. <laughs> Number 26. Along with our Queen Lizzie, there's a whole family of royals. Right. Right, 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 right. Yes, thank you, Lord. Right at the top of the family tree is the arrogantly named Alfred the Great, who defended his kingdom against the Vikings. Okay. Number to seven. Windsor Castle, where the Queen spends most of her time, is the largest royal home in the world. Windsor. It's also the oldest continually inhabited royal residence in Britain, don't you know? Have yeah, 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 yeah. A, wh a while back now, I learned about Windsor and some of the other castles. They're really quite qu amazing, honestly. Especially as an American. These things are freaking amazing. And the fact that royalty actually gets to go stay there, like, is pretty <laughs> unbelievable perk. Having been built by William the Conqueror around 1080 AD. Number 20. <coughs> <laughs> Nowhere in the UK is more than 75 miles away from the sea. Which is quite lucky, really, given that we do right. like to be beside the seaside. Or we do like to be beside the seaside. Right, right, right. That's something I have to wrap my head around. America is so gigantic that, like, the states in America are almost like different countries, at a, like, to, <laughs> you could almost think. And it, America is so massive, it's like, you're at any given time, you're like a 24-hour drive to across to the other side of the United States. Uh, whereas in the UK... Like the narrator saying, you're only a couple hours drive from the nearest water, like the coastline. You can drive across the whole country, like, right, pretty easily, which is in a day, you could get almost anywhere. It's really, really different to think about. It couldn't be more, couldn't be more different.
than here in the US. Beside the sea. Except me, actually. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating. <laughs> oh, God. It's everywhere. Number 29. London is the capital of England and the UK, by the way, uh, just in case you weren't aware. Is London the capital of the UK? I'm not sure I did know that. I always thought it was just the capital of England. The UK has a capital? But doesn't Scotland have a capital? And Northern Ireland has a capital? I'm sure Wales has a capital. And then there's a, ca a super capital? Super capital of the UK? London. Uh, I guess that makes sense in a way. I just didn't know it worked like that. I guess, like, the United States has a super capital, Washington, D.C., and yet every state has a capital. So it's the same. It's, it's, it's like that. Yeah, it's like that. Okay, that, I shouldn't think it's that weird. I hate the fact can't sue me. <laughs> Number 30. Just in case you visit and need to know the laws, you need to be 18 to drink alcohol and you're not allowed any drugs at all. Not even marijuana. So oh, I did, you know, it is hard for me to keep track because a lot in a lot of places around the world, marijuana is legal. Um, in some of the states in the United States, it's become legal. So in the UK, at least at the making of this video here, it's not legal. And the drinking age is 18? Alcohol and you're not allowed any drugs. Just in case you visit and need to know the laws, you need to be 18 to drink 18. alcohol and you're not allowed any drugs at all. Not even marijuana. Okay. So, okay. chaps, but hey, have a cup of tea instead. <laughs> Number 31. Rather stereotypically speaking of tea, every day us British drink 165 million cups of tea. Crazy. Which is over 20 times more than the average American. 20 times more. <laughs> that does not surprise me. 20 times. Brits drink 20 times more tea than Americans. Does not surprise me at all. <laughs> 20 times more. I don't know if I expected it to be that much, but it was going to be more because Americans don't even drink tea hardly ever. Uh, but we do drink a lot of coffee. How much coffee do people in the UK drink? That I wonder now. Is tea like our coffee? I'm sure people in the UK drink coffee as well. I don't know. I think I'm responsible for at least an 18th of that figure. Clive, give me a tea. Number 32. When you think of British food, you probably think of this. All yep, this. Yep, yep. Well, what about this? You curry, that is curry. Yeah, I know a little bit that curry is randomly very popular in the UK. Curry, which is from India, originally, right? You should, because the United Kingdom recently named chicken tikka masala as a national dish, which is a spicy curry created in Britain and is actually unheard of in India itself. Huh. Number huh. 33. Speaking of fish, and indeed chips, the first fish and chips restaurant was opened in 1860 in London by a Jewish immigrant named Joseph Mallon. So th wow. thank you, Joseph, for giving me that sweet, sweet newspaper wrapped batter drenched heart attack. I owe you one. Wow, oh my god, that was almost 200 years ago. Almost 200 years ago, the first fish and chips uh, brought by a Jewish immigrant. That is random, but I guess we should thank him. <laughs> People of the UK should be thanking him. <laughs> 200 years old, that dish, and it's still very, very, very popular, right? Yeah, I, I know it is. <laughs> that, to this day, that's what Americans think of when we think of British food. It's like fish and chips, basically, or beans and tea. But anyway, I think that's a good place to stop here for now. We're one third of the way through the 101 facts about the UK. This has been quite enjoyable. I love how it's just random facts that, you know, I don't feel like I would learn a lot of these facts any other way because they are so random. So this is like a wonderful way to just learn stuff. I feel like... I, I need to know, and I'm happy to learn about. It's been very educational, and I'm excited to continue this in part two. So, if you've enjoyed this so far, feel free to give this video a like, or leave a comment, perhaps with your thoughts on any of these facts that we've learned so far. And if you're interested in part two of this, or just more videos like this in general, me reacting to the UK and UK culture and learning about things, about the UK, 
that I've never seen or learned before. Feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.